So what should you do if you know you already have a roster fully locked and loaded with nothing but heavy hitters? You go out and get a few more dudes that can drop a few more bombs to help you get a few more dubs that can then help you hold the trophy at the end of the year. And yeah, we have. You are Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. My name is Cody Stovall. I want to thank you kindly for stopping by to make this your first listen. We're available on all of your podcasting platforms, visually as well on YouTube. Find me personally on X at All Day O State. Today, we're brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment matter more with FanDuel. Right now, you can bet $5 if you win. You get $200 back in bonus bets. Make sure you get started today by going to FanDuel.com slash locked on. The transfer portal sometimes giveth, sometimes taketh away. Last season, Oklahoma State experienced the other side of that equation, losing 26 some odd dudes. Now we only have six dudes coming in. As we discussed yesterday in conjunction with a little bit of the schedule stuff, the orange power portal has come. Whenever you are this locked and loaded, you don't need a whole heck of a lot. And you really don't need to overcomplicate things either. And I'm not just talking about from uh, numerical scholarship numbers and all that. I'm just talking about the meat and taters. Are you going to be able to bring in guys that can replicate what you lost? Or, as Gundy said, has, has said himself multiple times, I know words are hard for me, I'm sorry, to elevate, right? To get to that next level. We've got the guys to have another 10-win season. We've got a few more guys that we brought in through the transfer portal that I definitely think can help us catapult a 10-win season into potentially doing something more. So let's start off with our transfer guys. The only defensive guy, maybe the most important guy here, and that's Obi Azegbo from the Brian Naro Golden Tree of Life that is the Gannon University Golden Knights. He's classified as an undersized defensive end. With 54 tackles, 14 tackles for loss, seven sacks in just 25 games. Coming in at six foot three, 255 pounds, he has a Colin Oliver level first step that should transition to the same type of hybrid linebacker style of role at Oklahoma State. Could he glass factory himself to potentially do some stuff at defensive end? Maybe, but the height is always going to be a little bit of a limiting factor. What we need is. More Colin Olivers, right? Colin Olivers essentially filling the role that Von Miller did for a long time that everybody used as the metric for how this position should be viewed. I think that's fair. I think Obi Zegbo is going to fit right in nicely. <clears throat> Kobe Hilton, six foot one, 205 pounds safety, coming in with 175 tackles, double digit pass breakups, double digit tackles for loss. And he seems to have. All of the speed for days that our main man, Trey Rucker, lacks a little bit of. Trey Rucker's only limitations are his coverage abilities. And throughout the course of the season, we noticed that offenses found creative ways to put him in the untenable position of running 50 yards downfield with wide receivers and third down running backs. It was never going to be in a super advantageous situation for Trey Rucker. Now, can he improve his speed? Yes, he can. But is he going to be able to do improve his speed enough to catch what Kobe Hilton could do? The versatility that Kobe Hilton offers is not just at the safety position. He's another one of these jack-of-all-trades that we can maneuver around where we need him. <clears throat> another guy that has a lot of maneuverability is going to be A.J. Green, the lightning package to Ollie Gordon's thunder. The Tulsa Oki is coming home. After putting up 951 rushing yards and 1,409 all-purpose yards, ATDs, averaging 38 yards a game in punt returns, 38 yards a game in punt returns, mark it down, write it down, take it to the bank, or holler at me if I'm wrong and I cost you a little bit of the piggy bank action, and I'll try to hook something up for you. But 
A.J. Green will bust a 50-yard touchdown while throwing the Tyreek Hill-style deuces to his old woo pig suey brethren. Or should I say, woo pig suey brethren. I still love you, my Arkansas boo-boo, even if you're just a hog fan. A.J. Green is precisely what we needed, right? Jaden Nixon, him leaving, is always going to hurt the heart a little bit. But A.J. Green definitely fills that void, and that void is going to allow Sessi to do a little bit more of the development because he's going to need some body-by-glass. Sessi is before he's 100% ready. A.J. Green helps fill that gap. Tyler Foster, six foot seven, 250-pound tight end that was a six foot five, 220-pound wide receiver, and was just shy of 1,000 yards receiving in just seven games his senior of high school. <clears throat> Pitt was in on him pretty, pretty big time, but they backed off and they missed out, at least partially. Because of that injury, he goes to Ohio and hits a growth spurt. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. He's taller. He's bigger. He takes the same intangibles with him. Right, He still has that gritty, high-point, head-topper, outside wide receiver mentality. Because a decent amount of tight ends come from being something completely different. I mean, we know as Oklahoma State fans, how many defensive ends have we converted to tight ends? A lot. Probably more than you can count on just one hand. He's got really good hands, and the conversion was always going to be pretty natural for him. He just got bigger, right? You can take a very good linebacker like Malcolm Rodriguez and play some NFL tight end. How many basketball players have turned into tight ends? Big time ones. Tons of bigger athletic quarterbacks even like a Josiah Johnson or a Jelani Woods get converted all the time. But a tried and true wide receiver that just so happened to accidentally bump into another three or four inches in an extra 30 or 40 pounds is not prevalent. So it's time to jump on in on this Tyler Foster train and enjoy the ride Josiah style. Going from Tyler Foster and the compliment of Josiah right into Isaiah Glass. This six foot five, 300 pound Arizona State starting tackle was a track and field beast and also a basketball player. He adds instantaneously more street cred and a ridiculous amount of depth now. He would start at what? Probably 75% of P5 or P4 now schools, including the same percentage in the Big 12. But he comes to Oklahoma State knowing we return like 95% of our offensive line. That's a bold move, Cotton. Tell me that that doesn't gain an extra layer of respect just right there by itself. Because even though it's a bold move, I have a feeling that it's going to work out. And then DeWall often, the 5'11", 190-pound, Wide receiver from Northside High in the DFW, Texas area, coming in at an 11-second, 100-meter speedster. He's coming closer to home to unwrap a Christmas time trip present to Arlington, right next to BP Brennan Presley. He's been a little inconsistent at Virginia Tech, bouncing around between the bona fide certified starter for an entire season to then being you know more of a special teams demon, which isn't completely foreign to him because he was the Texas 5A Special Teams Player of the Year. He was first team All-State, Texas Top 100, and all-time Northside High School All-Purpose Yards record holder with his fireside style of drive, busting out over 5,100 yards by himself. It's, it's a feat that might not be caught for quite some time. So he, if he can take his production button, get it a little bit recalibrated, maybe the Rob Glass Factory will have, a, have some hand in it, and just get that a little bit more in Stillwater, this absolutely filthy, ridiculous high school star could reemerge in the house that Boone built as a star once again. Oh, I got a little teaser not for the weekend. Yamil Milly Talib should be a name that's not hard to forget, and it will be extremely unforgettable in the end. So make sure, uh, make sure you, you give that a gander. And also... Get your money right, or at least give yourself the opportunity to maybe get your money right with FanDuel. You already know, 
It's the best in the business for a reason. It's the official sportsbook partner of the NFL for a reason. You can bet on a wide variety of things, whether it be overs, unders, same game parlays, who's going to win the Super Bowl, who's going to score the next touchdown, and obviously many, many more things. The things that you can play with to get prepared for the Super Bowl, to get your money right, it's got to start with you downloading FanDuel. Make sure you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to get signed up. Our new customers join today. Get $200 back in bonus bets if you bet $5 or more and it wins by going to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Again, that is FanDuel.com slash locked on. Go there now. Make every moment matter more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Then we get to keep on trucking here. Guys, we all know how good Trey Griffiths is, at least projection-wise, what Trey Griffiths could easily become. Well, thankfully, it's not just us, right? Thankfully, it's not just the heavy hitter teams that really, really try to come after Trey Griffiths. Looking at you, Utah. But you know what, guys? You had to try, okay? I completely understand it, but here's the deal. Trey Griffiths is now a four-star rated wide receiver. Thank you, 247. He's getting his much-deserved des- bolster in the composite rankings. It's just enough, right? This six foot four, 210-pound wide receiver put up 1,763 yards at over 23 yards per completion. It's about time he gets his flowers, even though I know he doesn't really necessarily care about them. <clears throat> because if he did care about getting a bunch of fun, fluffy flowers for nothing more than props, poops, and giggles, he would have went to Utah. Yeah, I said it. I should maybe apologize, but I will not be doing that. I should actually even maybe be giving myself more props for having the internal giggles about not giving 13, 35, or 49 poops about you na- nations, stuffy, unwarranted, undeserved, self loathing and secretly soaking pretentiousness. Like, not all Utah fans. Actually, I've met some phenomenal Utah fans on Twitter. I have. But not most of them. Most seem to think, for whatever reason, that being and acting like an OU or Texas fan is some kind of massive badge of honor. Well, I hate to break it to you, fellas, but it's not. And it's just, it's slightly awkward to watch you guys try to be like OU and Texas fans. It's just, it's weird. But I don't condone animal cruelty, nor do I want to participate in any animal cruelty. So I will not beat this dead horse anymore. We will move on. We'll move on in knowing that Trey Griffiths is getting precisely what he has earned, what is deserved, and it does add a little bit of mystique to this class he's the highest rated we've rated guy we've received since getting Kendall Daniels in 2021 alongside Colin Oliver Nick Martin a couple other dudes the 2021 class is obviously very uh, beneficial to the success of this particular team but I'm so glad that we can continue this wide receiver lineage because we didn't Go after a bunch. We weren't super aggressive. When we got Trey, we focused on other other things. And thankfully, the feeling was reciprocal. Because obviously, Trey Griffiths stayed loyal and true to Oklahoma State throughout the process, even though a lot of heavy hitters were definitely trying to knock down his door. Trey Griffiths got an upgrade by coming to Oklahoma State. And then he gets an upgrade again by 247. Is he due for another upgrade post-spring? We will see. You know, we, we, we have enough depth at wide receiver to be fine. We have more than enough talent at wide receiver to be fine. But just like Zane Flores, right, the six foot three, 215-pound quarterback, that's the same size as Trey Griffiths. That's not a run-of-the-mill walk-in-the-park wide receiver. And he's got the vertical and quick twitch capabilities off the line to match it. 
I don't think he'll start as a freshman. I don't think he'll play a lot as a freshman, but I do see him really falling into that, that Talon Shetron style of emergence. The talent is off of the charts. It's just you, you got to nuance your way through to putting it all together. And Trey Griffiths should provide another long line of great wide receivers coming through Oklahoma State and to the NFL. Hopefully following in the footsteps of our main man, Leon Johnson, the third, real soon. What else might be real soon, or too soon, would be the discussion of Alan Bowman losing his job by like week three or four. Well, we now know that this conversation has happened. Okay? We're, we're moving on. To Robert Allen recently insinuating via the radio waves that a quarterback could fly up the depth chart and pass Allen Bowman if he struggles in the first few weeks. Because struggling is unnecessary in 2024. At least I think we know that. We have more than enough talent and depth that we shouldn't have to struggle at any particular position when you've got other guys that are pushing to make this whole thing a whole lot better. But I don't completely disagree with Robert Allen here, y'all. I don't. I do believe there's a very high probability that a quarterback can pass Allen Bowman in the first four weeks, right? But unlike our main man, R.A., I don't think it'll be Zane Flores quite yet. I do, however, think that 2025 could be a wild, dynamic scene at the quarterback position for Oklahoma State, but not so much in 2024. We know what we have in Bowman. I feel very strongly in what we have at some of the other spots. But I don't even necessarily think that Robert Allen thinks that this is 100% for real. I mean, heck, we both thought that it was Garrett Rangel's job last year, and we were both wrong. So in the end, who knows? Crap happened. But y'all know I'm definitely a betting man, and I'm betting that Zane will be a big-time gadget guy that definitely has some special packages and everything built in because you can't hide away a six foot four, 215-pound quarterback with his talent level and some fairly decent Lambert feedies on him forever. I could be dead wrong. R.A., Robert Allen, could be dead on. I mean, he's got access like no one else in America. But I'll be completely real with you. This feels more like a political type style posturing statement than an actual legitimately heartfelt football take from Robert Allen. It might be just a little bit of Prapa mixed in with a little dose of Ganda. But hey, you Ganda for life, right? And while we're here, let's shift some gears to Cowgirls softball as they get life right with an opening season 8 0 fifth inning run rule W over Cal State Northridge. We were just handing out hits like hotcakes. You get a hit. You get a hit. You get a run. You get a hit. You get a win. And just minutes ago, we moved to 2-0 and on the season with a tight contest with Leola Marymount. Thankfully, Caroline Wong showed up to drop a bomb in the seventh to lift us to the 1-0 victory. Part of that deal is last minute, right? We were supposed to play Portland State. That's the team we were prepared for. Not that that's an excuse. There's no excuse to lose this game. So thank the heavens it did not go that way. And sometimes the ugly ones mean the most. Loyola Marymount's ace is pretty daggone good. I mean, she fanned 11 of our cowgirls down. And it took somebody coming off the bench in a DH role to hit the game winner. But that's what depth is for. That's what Kenny Gajewski is here to continue to build. When baseball season's about to creep around the corner, I do know that we've got some more commits, right, that are going to be coming down the pipeline. And now that we're on the dead period, right, so from now until March 1st, there won't be any uh, hanky-panky connection with the high school kids from college coaches. It just it is what it is. But it does give us a little bit more time to kind of focus on not only some of the kids that have committed already to Oklahoma State, but 
some of the ones that we're looking at that could potentially come on board pretty quick. And, guys, we've got some 2025 class, 2026 class. I've even got some 2027 class guys that uh, that I've done some stuff on. Not all just for Oklahoma State, but, you know, I am slightly selfish, and I do absolutely want to be able to help kids get to Oklahoma State and a multitude of other places anytime I can be of assistance. This is going to be a fun year. The guys we brought in from the portal should be able to kind of emphasize that. The record needs to as well. The trophy case needs to as well. It's nice to see 247 is now looking at Oklahoma State commits like, hmm, hmm. We miss on a decent amount of the guys that go to O State. We probably shouldn't miss on Trey Griffiths. Let's go ahead and upgrade him. That's a Texas move. Let's call a spade a spade. You can commit to Texas and be not even better than somebody committed to Oklahoma State or Iowa State or K-State, and you automatically get an extra half star or star. For anyone that says that that crap doesn't happen, you might um, well, you might want to reevaluate your stance on that one. But that's pretty much all we're going to have for this one right here. Guys, do me a favor, all right? Stop, collaborate, and go throat punch that mother truck and like button for me. Of course, share, comment, subscribe. My podcast people out there, drive safe, travel safe. And let me know what you think about the six-man portal class that we brought in. Do you think it's enough to get us over that 10-11 win hump? Is it enough to get us to the trophy title ceremonies in Arlington? I know it's enough to get us there. Is it enough to get over the top? Let me know what you think. Cleaver of you, hit the stars. If, if you like uh, if you like what's coming out of the, the radio waves here, or if you're looking at, uh, at my eyeballs, either way, I appreciate you. You know I love you. As always, God bless. Go Pokes. And thank you for tuning in to make this your first listen here on Locked On Oklahoma State. You could be anywhere. I'm so happy that you do, in fact, choose to be here. Means the world. Means the world. And we've got a lot of stuff to get to. We've got a lot of stuff to spread, all right? So get your hammers out. Get your, uh, your peanut butter and jelly spoon to spread it around. That's what we're doing. Sharing is caring. Share this daggone deal. All right. Later, taters. You are a locked on Oklahoma.